Hey guys! So instead of doing a vlog, which I usually like to upload, I've decided to put together an educational video. Um, this is especially for Year 12s as well as other high school students who are aiming to get into medicine. So as you may or may not know, I am currently studying the Bachelor of Medical Science and the Doctor of Medicine at Monash University. This is one of the shortest medical courses in Australia and it is the only undergraduate medical course available in Victoria. So I've dedicated this video for those who are interested in studying medicine at Monash and what specific information you should be aware about, as well as specific advice tailored to Monash medicine. So I'll be answering some questions that I often get asked, as well as giving some advice to um, high school students, as well as other students who are aiming to get into medicine. So before I start answering any questions, I want to explain some of the important information for you to understand how to actually apply for Monash Medicine. Monash University looks at three different requirements. The first is the ATAR, the second is the UCAT, and the third is your interview. So the UCAT and the ATAR are actually used as hurdles to determine whether or not you're applicable to receive an interview. Now, considering that you receive your UCAT score around August, it's important to use that to determine how well you should do in your ATAR. If you have a low UCAT score, then you should have a very high ATAR score to weigh that out. On the other hand, if you have a very high UCAT score, then you can have a little bit of a lower ATAR score and still get an interview. So those two should be weighed out together and will be used as a hurdle to actually receive an interview invitation in the first place. Now, after you've understood that part, it's important to understand how to actually apply for Monash Medicine. So there are three different entry pathways into Monash Medicine. The first is called the CSP. The Commonwealth Supported Place is heavily subsidised by the government, meaning that most of your university course fees are covered by federal funding. Uh, it is important to note, though, while the majority of your fees are covered, there is still an outstanding balance known as the student contribution fee, which is around $11,000 to $12,000 per year. Now, the CSP is not the same as a Hex Help loan place. Um, that is a separate loan that is given to all university students, and it is up to you as to whether you want to receive that loan and pay off your fees after university, or you can pay it all up front. The second type of entry pathway is known as the BMP, Bonded Medical Place. Approximately 28% of all CSP places in university medical programs across Australia must be set aside for uh, the BMP scheme. So these students will be required by the government to practice in a designated area of medical need at the completion of their medical training. Now, important things to consider is that there is a three-year period return of service obligation. For these three years, you'll be placed in usually a rural or regional area with a workforce shortage. These three years will be completed within a period of 18 years um, after you finish medical school. So you can complete 50% of this period before your fellowship and then finish the rest after your fellowship. Although the government does restrict what hospitals you can work at, you still have a variety of different options within Victoria. You don't have to spend the whole three-year period at one hospital. You can move around to different places of need um, and fill up to accumulate to three years in total. Beyond this employment obligation, the BMP is no different from a CSP from the financial point of view. Uh, these bonded positions have identical eligibility requirements as a CSP and are also subsidised to the same degree. The third type of entry pathway is called the ERC, Extended Rural Cohort. As an ERC student, you'll spend your first two years on the Clayton campus. For the next two years of clinical training, you'll be guaranteed a place in rural or regional Victoria. Your final clinical training year will consist of a series of six-week placements which you can choose to do in a mix of regional or metropolitan hospitals. However, you must do at least 12 weeks in a rural setting. Again, there's no difference in terms of the content that you learn. The only difference is that you spend two years out of the five years um, at Monash studying in a different campus. Usually, Monash University accepts a total of 242 domestic students per year. Now, considering 28% of these students have to be BMP, 
68 places will be given to a BMP student and 30 places will be given to ERC students. The rest of the places are CSP. The reason I've told you about these three placements is because when you apply for your university courses on VTAC, so you have to apply for these three courses separately, you can either choose to apply for just one, for example, the CSP place, or just in case you don't get a CSP place, you can put down your BMP as well as your ERC as the second and third preference. So for example, on my, if you look at my preferences, I've put the CSP as my first, and then I've put the uh, ERC as my second, as well as the BMP as my third. As VTAC allows you to pick a total of eight preferences, uh, you can fill out the rest of the five uh, preferences with any course that you desire, preferably a backup course if you don't get into medicine. Okay, so let's dive into the questions now. What subjects did I do in year 12? So I studied English, math methods, specialist maths, chemistry, history, revolutions, and legal studies. So you can see that I had a bit of a mix here. Half of my subjects were maths, science, and the other half was English humanities. So I think this shows that you don't have to go all mathy or sciencey in order to get into medicine. Big advice that I have is don't play the scaling game, but don't let the scaling game play you. What I always tell people is pick subjects that they like and that they're good at. So the subjects that they pick should be an overlap of those two requirements. So as you may have heard from a lot of teachers and career advisors, it is risky to pick subjects just based on how much they scale. But I think an important thing is not to underestimate yourself and do subjects that are commonly known as the blunt subjects or the easier subjects, like Bizman or human health development or legal studies. If you are good at these subjects and you're very confident in content subjects, then definitely go for it. But don't pick those subjects just because it's known as the easier subjects, because there's no guarantee that you're going to get a very high score. So the six final subjects that you pick, obviously, except for English, which is a prerequisite, should be subjects that you're both good at as well as interested in. Now, for those who aren't in year 12, a way to determine whether a subject is compatible with you is to first of all look at the study design. So the study design will list all the different areas of knowledge and the stuff that you're going to have to learn during the year. The second thing is to look at past exams, which is on the VEKA website. So you'll be able to see how you're going to have to answer questions or what type of questions you're going to have to answer as well. Something that was useful for me personally is to send emails to VC teachers and ask them what exactly the year looks like. I did this with some of the subjects that I wasn't sure of, for example, uh, history revolutions or uh, specialist maths. I would ask the teachers and talk to them as to what my personal strengths were and what kind of questions out of you know the past exams worried me. And then they would give me advice as to whether or not their subject is right for me as a student. So always ask your teachers, ask the senior students above you, as well as any other people around you who've done VC before. What is it like studying Monash medicine? So I was actually surprised there wasn't a lot of YouTube videos out there that explained um, the course structure of Monash medicine. Now, luckily, there's a lot of information on the Monash website. As you can see on the screen, there are four different themes that Monash teaches their students. So the first theme is personal attributes and qualities needed as a medical student and ultimately a medical practitioner. So the first theme is all about how to be a doctor. You learn a lot about the professional responsibilities and the communication skills that you need to have as a doctor. You also learn about the ethical side and the legal side of being a doctor as well. The second theme is the social, environmental and behavioural contexts of illness and the practice of medicine, especially in rural and remote areas and the population and global health. So this is all more so about case studies. So you would learn a lot about case studies which are based in Australia as well as internationally. And these case studies would be used for you to learn how to problem solve. So the third theme is all about the human body. It's the sciencey, content heavy stuff that you need to know in order to be a doctor. So for my first semester, um, theme three is what consisted of most of my lectures and workshops. 
Uh, you would have to learn a lot about how the actual human body works from the scale of the cell to the scale of the whole human body. Finally, the fourth theme is about the clinical skills of being a doctor. So this is all about how to actually act like a doctor. So we're taught how to interview patients as well as communication skills, history taking, physical examination and procedural skills required to be a doctor. So as a uni student in a COVID year, so most of our classes were run online. So there were lectures recorded and then provided online, which we would have to watch at our own time. And then there were practicals, tutorials and workshops, which we would attend through Zoom. So like I said before, Monash Medicine is a five year course. The first two years are preclinical, which means that you're based on the university campus and that you'll be mostly spending your time studying. The next three years are clinical years, which means that you'll be barely on campus and you're actually out at hospitals taking your placements and doing your rotations. So although it has only been one semester, so I've personally really enjoyed my experience at Monash. First of all, because I'm able to study something I like from day one. So the fact that we learn a lot about how to actually be a doctor and what qualities a doctor needs to have from, you know, the first week of university is something that was a bit confronting, but also was very enjoyable. What's the difference between Monash Medicine and other Australian schools? Now, the biggest difference is obviously the duration. So the Monash Medical course is only five years long. So you're able to fast track the process of becoming a doctor in the first place, and you're able to spend less money and time studying and you know, earning more income and gaining more experience out of medical school faster. Now, in terms of qualifications, Monash Medicine is exactly the same as any other graduate course. It used to be called the MBBS, but now it changed to the MD, which is at the same standard of graduate medical courses such as University of Melbourne's Doctor of Medicine. This is equivalent to the level of MD in the US. Are there any opportunities to further your studies in the course? Something else that is uniquely uh, Monash is the fact that you're able to take a gap year between fourth and fifth year, and you're able to do one of four things. The first thing is a BMed Sci, which you can add on to your normal bachelor and doctor degree. This is especially for people who want to go more into the research field rather than be a practicing doctor. The second option, and you're able to do one of four things. The first thing is a BMed Sci, which you can add on to your normal bachelor and doctor degree. This is especially for people who want to go more into the research field rather than be a practicing doctor. The second option is to do a Master of Public Health. Usually the Master of Public Health is one and a half years, but you're able to fast track it to just one year if you are successful in the application. The third option is doing a PhD. Through the MD course, you're actually able to get a PhD within one year. So now this is something that has a lot of requirements though. You have to get a high distinction, uh, which means you'll have to have a WAM of over 80% and you'll have to go through a very rigorous application process. Uh, so again, this is for people who want to uh, who want to study a specific area of medicine and would like to go down the research path in the future. Finally, the fourth option is to just take a gap year. Fourth year is known as the very rigorous and tiring year, just because um, that is when you do most of your rotations and you're also preparing for the end of medical school. So there are a few people who choose to do a gap year and take a break. And during that time, some people actually choose to do a diploma of languages or a diploma of liberal arts, which you can also study at Monash. Again, you can choose to not do any of this and go straight into fifth year rather than taking that year off. But for those who want to do a bit more research or want to have a break, then these are the options that are available. What are the cons of Monash medicine? Now, some cons of studying medicine at Monash is that because it is an undergraduate degree, your timetable is fixed and you're not able to choose what subjects you want to do at what time and you don't have that element of doing an elective on the side. This was something that was a bit disappointing for me just because I think um, the ability to choose classes when I wanted and to study something on the side such as a language but 
I was unable to. Now, another con of Monash Medicine is that because you only spend two years on campus, you're not able to fully enjoy and immerse yourself in the uni experience. That's something that not a lot of people told me about. So be aware of that. And if that is a big factor of your uni life and what you're expecting at uni, then maybe reconsider undergraduate medicine. Any final words? So I have one word that I live by. YOLO. <laughs> you only live once. Don't regret the opportunities that you failed to take. So just imagine how happy you would feel on the day that you get your ATAR back or find out what university course you got accepted into. Your actions and mindsets today determine your ability to achieve success and happiness in the future. So thank you so much for watching this very long video, guys. I hope it was of help. I think the reason I produced this YouTube video in the first place is because I couldn't find a lot of YouTube videos out there that were specifically tailored to Monash Medicine. That's it for me. Best of luck, guys, and see you on the other side. There is no such thing as a coincidence. The fact that you're watching this video means you're energetically aligned with me and this message. Your thoughts create your reality. Well, you already knew that, yet you still live a life that you oh, dread. Excuse me. Ah! That is because when you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic. 